Hey guys, welcome to Make It Yours with House of Devises. And today I'm gonna to talk to you about three ways to find courage with color in your home. Now, the reason I decided to make this video is because I am constantly being asked on Instagram how I decide on colors that I use in my home, constantly get comments about how bold my use of color choice is. So I thought I'd do a video um, to try and help people who feel a little bit less confident than they would like to be in terms of using colour in their home. So I find that often people fall into three main categories. This doesn't cover everybody, but it covers a large majority of people in terms of using colour in their home decor. The first person. I would describe this person as colour consistent. On the face of it they may not look colour confident. They may use monochromatic colours, maybe just a black and white colour scheme or they might have a very consistent neutral colour palette that they use. And so on the face of it you might think they're not particularly colour confident. However, they are considered about the colours that they are using in their home and they use them boldly and they do it very well, even if those colours themselves aren't particularly vibrant. The second type of person I would describe as colour vibrant. They're kind of the other end of the scale. They are very courageous in how they use colour and you might find mixed colour palettes in rooms. You might find warm murals. You might find really bright, bold, clashing colours that somehow seem to work together and you have no idea how. The third type of person is really who this video is aimed at. And that's people who would like to be a bit more bold with their use of colour in their home, but probably aren't prepared to go as far as the colour vibrant type that I just spoke about. If that sounds like you, definitely keep watching for my three tips. So, tip number one, how to choose your colours. People often say to me, I just don't know where to start. A really good place to start is your wardrobe. If you have certain colours that you are prepared to wear day in, day out, it's probably a good place to start in terms of putting them into your home. So, we don't actually have wardrobes at the moment, but this is currently my rate of clothes. First thing is head to your wardrobe and for this exercise, group your clothes by colour. And what you'll see is quite dominant in my rail is blacks and greys, which is a staple of most people's wardrobes. I've then got a section that's based around oranges, reds, plums, which is probably why I was drawn to the earthy red tones in this room. Then you'll also notice that I've got a section that is blues and greens, which might also be why I was drawn to greens in the living room. But this is a really good way for you to spot what tones of colours you love. Remember, if we're trying to become more courageous with colour, these things are here to help complement these things. It might also be a really good time to think about pattern as well. You might notice I quite like some quite vibrant patterns. Although I don't tend to use them on my walls, I tend to use them in soft furnishings or upcycles. And again, if you don't feel confident with pattern, that's a really good route to go down. Once you feel a bit more confident on your initial thoughts on colour palette, then we can move on to step two, which is how to create your colour scheme. So now we're really thinking about how to group those colours. If you're drawn to a more bold colour, but you are worried about what to team that with, a good way to play it safe is to team it with white or black. Black highlights can really accentuate the colour, or white can really allow the colour to speak for itself. Another way is to group your chosen colour with similar tones and hues. For example, in this room, I've got an earthy red, it's quite bold, I've teamed it with white, but I've also gone for some other hues, um, some terracotta oranges, pinks, warm mustard yellows, um, all colours that create a kind of warm feeling vibe in the room and are similar tones. Some people are really good at colour clashing and choosing colours that you ordinarily maybe wouldn't see together. But if you're not feeling courageous with colour, I would avoid starting off in this place. You can build yourself up to get there. Finally, our third way, how to apply. You've made a very bold colour choice. You've decided on your palette and exactly the colour tones that are going to be in your room. How are you going to apply those colours and feel confident once you've got them on the walls? Well, a good way to start is to not just think about your walls. 
figure out your woodwork. Have you got a dado rail, picture rail, and are you going to add the colour palette to these? What are you doing with your skirting boards? What are you doing with your architraves? Even radiators. Including these to create a larger colour block is a really good way to make that colour more prominent. So for example, behind me, you can see I've got the dado rail in the same colour as the wall and the radiator is also in that same colour. I've even got the skirting boards in the same colour to really embolden that choice of colour. You might decide to go the opposite route and you might want to pick out one of those features in one of your colours. This type of thing works really well with coving and skirting boards. Another route to go down is hints of colour box. So you might decide to have a circle or a semicircle as a feature of colour on your wall. You might decide to have a rectangle of colour behind some artwork to give it an extra framing, but also a nice pop of colour. If you're feeling brave, you might want to think about what's being called the fifth wall, and that's your ceiling. This is really great if you've already got a picture rail in your room, because that acts as a natural dividing point for, the, for your colour on the ceiling to stop. And then you might want to go into something more neutral on the walls. A lot of people are afraid of painting their ceiling of colour. We've kind of been told that the ceilings need to be white to lift the room and create more space. That is totally true if your goal is to create space in that room. But you may have a room that you want to be nice and cosy and snug, and that's your perfect opportunity to be brave with something like painting the ceiling. So that's your three ways to find courage with colour in the home. I have one more thing to add, and that is things to avoid. Now, this may be controversial, and this is my personal opinion. It's not a problem if you don't agree. But personally, I would avoid colours that almost feel like they remove any vibrancy from the room. And my classic examples of this are browns and greys. This does not mean that browns and greys can't work. Although people who know me well know that I'm really not a fan of greys in the home. But because these colours are also quite practical, it doesn't mean don't avoid them. But it does mean try to pair them with something that can lift those colours. So if you've got a grey sofa, it's super comfy, it wipes off your kids' spillages like a dream, pair it with a mint green or a sky blue, something that might lift it, the grey, rather than another shade of grey that can kind of drain the energy from your room. And one last point is around neutral colours. If you're going for real neutral tones, also think really carefully about your materials. Textures will stand out more and become really key. So think about, are you going for wickers, rattans? What tone is your woodwork? Try things like waxes instead of varnishes and really natural fibres like linens, jutes. These things will bring different levels to your decor. So I hope this video has really helped you become more courageous with colour in your home and giving you some tips to get started on doing so. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you're following if you're watching on IGTV so that you can see the next in Make It Yours with House of Devises. See you next time!